Attention Austin guitarists, are you in need of setup or repair on your axe even during these quarantine times? Well, I have the guy for you. That's Jason Swedberg over at J. Scott Luthery. You can find him at J. Scott Luthery on Facebook. Gang, I've been taking my guitars to Jason for over 20 years, and not only does he do the best job, but he has the best prices and the fastest service in town. That's J. Scott Luthery on Facebook. Don't forget, whether it's electric, acoustic, or bass, Jason Swedberg is your guy. Check out J. Scott Luthery on Facebook. Let's get down. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I get here? It's time for How Did I Get Here? And now here is your host. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys have all uh, been safe, sane, and healthy. How long has this been going on right now? I don't know what week this is. I can't tell anymore. I can't tell what's going on. I can't. I've been. (laughs) Guys, I've been taking these morning naps for the last couple weeks. Not every day, but more days than not. I take a nap at 11 till like 1. (laughs) What a weird thing to do. I don't know. I feel like it's weird. It's it's starting to go. It, they're opening up Texas. I don't know where where you're listening from, but but this week they're opening up on on Friday. They're opening up uh, different retail businesses, malls, movie theaters, restaurants. People can do the twenty five percent capacity thing. I don't know, man. I, I I have no idea. I don't know how a pandemic works or how it doesn't work or how long you're supposed to stay quarantined. But I would be real bummed if this shit started over again. I'll be honest with you. I'll be real bummed. Um, if it's not, and people are being safe and still practicing safe things, I think in Austin overall has had a good grade nationally as far as as far as a city, Travis County. I mean, we've got you know well over a thousand cases, but or we've had well over a thousand cases, but I think it could have been a lot worse. And I think people sheltering in place has been a great uh, has has helped immensely. I hope it has. I mean, again, once again, I'm not a scientist. I'm a guy with a podcast who's actually kind of an out-of-work musician right now. Anyway, I know we're all itching to get back to work. I know we're all itching to get back and do stuff. I don't know how itching I am, though, to go back to clothing that isn't as comfortable as shorts or sweatpants. Are you guys finding that to be one of the fears? Like, maybe I've gotten a little used to just dressing like this all the time. I wonder... I never thought it was acceptable. Like, even if I go to the grocery store... I would dress in some way that like I, I didn't I didn't look like a person who just hung out in sweatpants all the time. Not that that's bad, but as an artist, as a musician, you want to look a little bit more than a guy in sweatpants. So I've been in sweatpants and shorts now for two months, and I'm starting to feel like, well, this could this should be an acceptable look now publicly. I don't know. Who knows how people are going to go when everything opens back up? People might be dying to get dressed up. Get all done up and put on their tightest skinny jeans. Let me tell you something. If you guys have been eating like me, I don't even know if my skinny jeans fit anymore. That's the truth. You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try on my skinny jeans and uh, tune in Friday and I'll tell you if they fit or not. So skinny jeans, we'll talk about that on Friday's show. All right? And gang, uh, I want to quickly promote I've been doing these live streams every Thursday at 6 p.m. on my Johnny Gowdy Music Facebook page. Tomorrow night will be the fourth one. I I think it might be the last one for a little while. I don't know. I mean, I'm enjoying doing them. It is weird playing to your phone. (laughs) But people seem to be liking it. So I don't know. Maybe I'll do more. But tune in tomorrow night. Johnny Gowdy Facebook page. That's Thursday, 6 p.m. Happy hour show. Good times. Speaking of live streams, uh, my guest today, Ray Prim, great artist. I don't know what what number this is of him on the show. He's been on the show so many times now that I don't even know off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. But uh, he's a great musician. He went through the artist development program that we have at Austin Music Foundation last year with us. And he recorded a beautiful song that he wrote called Too Much to Lose that I'll be playing on here. It's only available on the vinyl right now. Uh, There's a vinyl record called The Next on Wax, and you can find it at the Austin Music Foundation. I think there's still some available to get. But anyway, 
Ray Prim, amazing artist here in Austin. I've known him for years and years. I've talked about this before when he's been on the show, but I've watched him grow from the lead singer of this band, Seven Stones, in the 90s into this guy that is like a very intense singer-songwriter, then also a guy that has really learned how to do his own recording. Now, in this uh, time of quarantine, we have found out that Ray Prim also knows how to put together a great TV show. He started a uh, Facebook a group called Premonitions, Lies, and Videotapes. And uh, if you go there, he's got shows where he's promoting other bands. He's got uh, songs that he records with his band and makes these acapella videos on there, and he puts them on there. It's, they're fucking great. Ray Prim is an amazing talent, a great songwriter. And as far as guests go, he is a very entertaining dude. So uh, Ray Prim and I talk about his quarantine time, what he's been doing with music, what he's been watching on TV, how he's been feeling, talking about this new group that he had just started when we did this. This was a few weeks ago, and now he's got it going on. He's got a couple shows a week going on. He's had bands on like uh, Jackie Venson. He's had uh, Wendy Colonna, American Dreamer, uh, Madam Radar. He asked me for some video a few weeks ago when he was starting this, but I couldn't download this one video that I wanted to give him to show on there. Anyway, I'll figure it out. Regardless, Ray Prim. Find him at rayprim.com. He's got records out everywhere. This song that you're about to hear, Too Much to Lose, he recorded with Frenchie Smith and Anar Peterson over at the bubble. I got to be there for some of it. I got to be around for some of the mixing too. It was very, very exciting and it's a beautiful, beautiful song. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with my very dear old friend, the amazingly talented and incredibly cool Ray Prim. Let's get down. Hi. All right. What up? Oh. I'm eating too. Yeah, what are you eating? Eggs, um, potatoes, and and um, beef bacon. That sounds delicious. Uh, Golly. Do you find yourself uh, cooking more um, these days? A little bit. You think you're going to walk out of here a little fatter after this is over? Probably, probably so. Me too. If I if I if I can't if I can't um figure out a way that I need to because I can't I can't run anymore because of my knees. Right. And so I just gotta figure something out. What about walking? Man, walking. I'll be walking through all that corona out there. Yeah. I don't trust it. Yeah. Now I don't know. I don't. I want to. I want to walk. I want to walk. Um, Chichi or Penny, but I have to see. Yeah. All right. So I've been enjoying your live streams a lot. They're great. Oh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you can see the progression as you've been learning that app. They look oh, yeah, and I'm sound le- better. I'm, I'm learning more and more now. Yeah, I'm yeah. Le- now I'm, I'm taking out the audio and putting it in Pro Tools and bringing it back in. And you can only do so much. I mean, I, I don't want to. If I could, if I could teach them all how to record, then we could have it really good. But because they don't have the same mics, I have to kind of match them a little bit so it doesn't sound when I use the violins or whatever. Right. So other people, but. Um, it's fun, man. That thing's addicting. What is the app? What's it called? It's called, it's called Acapella. Acapella? Mm-hmm. Okay. Acapella. It's got some serious quirks to it, but for the most part, it's, it's fun. That's awesome. Uh, mm. What was I going to say to you? I guess the last time you were on was when you did uh, Too Much to Lose on the next, and we had done the whole artist development program, and you played that show. You guys were fantastic that night. And oh, then, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's and right. then you were going on to play, like, uh, Bugle Boy and stuff like that. All that went well? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, played that with the, we played it with the quartet. And then um, that might have been the last show we played with the quartet, was it? When was the Bugle Boy? February 1st? Yeah, I think that might have been the last. Maybe. Like, that's, that's right before everything's the, the ball dropped. Yeah. I think it was crazy after that. Yeah, it did get very crazy after that. Let me ask you this. Did you have a lot of stuff lined up for South by Southwest? Or 
this no, year? No, I never did. No? No, I never, no. I mean, I lost out on a couple of private ones that were paying some money. Oh, that's... One of them, sorry. one of the companies actually, no, one of the companies actually paid us still. That's um, good. Serious, serious Logic, they, 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 they um, kept in the bargain. I, I appreciate that. A couple of people that just, like told us the week before, like the two or three days before, and like, sorry. I said, okay, but what if I was doing this full time, you know? Yeah. And I depend, I depended on that money. That that would have been aggravating. But yeah. It wasn't that bad. I, but I never really play a lot of South by Southwest. I never get asked to play any of those private shows. Well, let me I don't ask. go looking for them. You don't. Well, how do you go look? Because everybody's like saying you should find us. Like, how do you look for a show? Like, how do you know that those shows exist? All these shows. I've always wondered. Like, how do you even know they exist? So, how do you know to go try to looking for it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. And I mean, a lot of times too, it's it's hard to find corporate shows that are looking for original music. Because I mean, I'm in Skyrocket. And now we've been doing this for like, you know, out in, in public and stuff for a good 17 years. And we have a guy that's plugged in that mm. spreads the name around. I guess that's what he does. You know what? I, I, I mean, I know he's a booking agent. I don't know exactly how he reaches out to corporations and lets them know. Yeah. I, do know that, it... I do know that once you play one and somebody sees you from that one, it kinda goes all of a sudden you start fire. getting, yeah, then people know who you are. Yeah, story of my life. Yeah, but it is Take tough that. for for original music, you know. And you're not really like a party band, where you could see somebody well, like like uh like a group of Fantasma or something. Maybe them because they play, you know, or somebody like the Night Owls or something that play. Well, I'm like, talking about those showcases and stuff like that. I thought you were talking about not the the corporate things. I, I use people use ask me doing. I I don't do that with the full band. I, maybe like three or four of us. I thought you were talking about like all those like the day party here and this day party. Oh, yeah, people okay. play like a yeah. thousand okay. shows. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was talking about. I never, I never know about those shows. I never, I never do a lot of things during South by Southwest because one, I don't get asked to do a lot of things, and two, I don't know about them. What's up, Penny? I don't know about them, so I never have any problems with South by Southwest. I never. I mean, when it was canceled, only I didn't have anything during the week during that week at all. Really, my thing was on Monday and the Friday before. Okay. So, yeah. Um, but it's you know it's a good thing we did cancel though. Shoot. Yeah. We would have we would have been like Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana is in really bad shape. Would have been like Mardi Gras, probably yeah. worse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Did you thing. did you uh, back to these live streams? Are you just releasing those songs? Like you make them, you you put some work into them, and then you put them out. You're not just live streaming. I've seen you do a few live streams too. Live streams are are, are, are um, stressful. Yeah, they're stressful. Like because like because the, the, the technology is like you know like every time I've tried to do a live stream, something's happened. Like either. When I tried to do it with the quartet, right before they, they made us where you can't even do that, break down, um, we did one and everything you, you can imagine went wrong. The, um, poor Tina's um, air conditioning went out. Um, the, it, we, I, I've been practicing all week long how to get online, and I had no problems. And then when the, right before we get online, I got this thing, something went wrong. And it wouldn't let us online, so now it's 8 o'clock, 8.05, 8.02, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, golly. And then my guitar wouldn't stay in tune. So now what I like to do is just, if I'm going to do live, um, whenever I feel like it, if I feel like something like, if I leave here and I say, you know what, why don't I play a song online? Then I'll probably do it then. Otherwise, yeah. I haven't been, I'm not going to play any, any stuff like that. And the videos, I have more control over, and they're fun. Yeah. You know, I can just put it out there. All the songs I'm releasing right now, are the. I'm, of course, you know I'm working on another EP. So I ain't got no, so I went back to those songs. Those, remember that band I was in, Prim? Yes. We had a lot of songs that we didn't make a record out of. Uh, we have a couple songs that we did make a record of, and they suck. Like they absolutely suck. So I'm redoing a lot of those songs. So on your and own. What I'm gonna do? Oh yeah, here at the house, and then send them. I, I mean, the two people that can still record with me are the keyboard players, uh, the bass player. And then um, me, and then the violins. I have to wait till the, they lift the band, and the guitar. I have to lift, wait till they lift the band, and even yeah. Mexican chocolate backup vocals. I gotta wait till they lift the band because he doesn't know have a way to record. Right. I wish they did. Now I know that you know what we need to figure out a way to get everybody to record. Yeah. 
we keep going. Yeah, definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, I have them out. Um, I was listening to this record, uh, Unconditional, this morning, and I was I was taking note of the piano player on that. Who is that? Um, with two different ones. Um, James Clark. He's like the guy in England. Okay. I've been I've been I've been using him. Oh yeah, I remember I you told me about him. Yeah. Since 2000, man, I looked at one record thing we did. It's around 2007. Wow. We've been using, we've been working together. 2007, you know. It's like, man, this is a long time. And we've been working. I've been using him before anybody else in this band. Yeah. So um, he's in England. So I, lo- I just love using him because we've done it for so long now. He knows what I like. I and you know, I, he sends me a lot of stuff to choose from, and I just know he's just easy to work with. You know what I mean? Yeah. The kindred spirits. I mean, I wish I wish he lived here. I'd have him and Mariana in the band. One on piano and one on... No, that's too many people. <laughs> that's how I already got like a thousand people in the band. Yeah, so, I know. How many do you have officially right now in the band? Um, if we're at full force... Full force. Uh, eight. Eight. It's and a lot. that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. I, but, if, but I mean, with soul music, I mean, it, that you have different things. Like everything that makes me... I need every everything of it. Um, the two violins, guitar, bass, drums, Mexican chocolate, keyboards, and me. Yeah. So it seems like it's. I mean, we don't take up a lot of space though, because two of the violins, like two of the people, don't have instruments or stuff like that. They just show up. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. fun though. It is fun, man, and you guys have been killing it out there. And, thank you, thank uh, we've you. We've talked about it before. Like it's been interesting to watch you go. Did you just refer to your music as soul music? Singer soul writer. Okay, that's what I call it. Singer soul writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was talking to. Uh, I did the Natalie Price has a show too now. Oh yeah, I, I, on I gotta, You know what I need to do? I need to get on my. For some reason, I've gotten to the point where like I feel like since everything stopped, I don't need to use my calendar. Right. So I forget. I'm forgetting everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, forget, yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I forgot this. I forgot another interview I did with um, Jack Burton in Spain. Um, I was like, oh my god, I need to start putting this stuff in my calendar. Just because the world stopped doesn't mean it's, everything else will stop. Yeah. So I'm supposed to do one with her April 11th, and I already know I'm gonna probably gonna forget it. So but I, I put it in my calendar. Yeah. The hardest you part. I was on there last night. Oh, how was it? It was real fun. So uh, what is she doing? Interviewing people? Yep. It's like she already knows me. She inter- yep. But she she hmm. has some she has some questions she pulls out from a game. She has an angle. She's trying hmm. to take people out of the headspace that they're in freaking out of constant uh terror. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I thought I thought her show was on Sundays. Oh, it's on Saturday nights. Oh, Saturday nights. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's on Instagram? Yeah, but last night we couldn't do for some reason we couldn't do it. It was it was giving us some some uh, it was giving us the business. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that live stuff is always something with that live stream. Yeah, it kind of is weird. And the other thing too is you don't know how it's sounding until you go back and listen to it. And I did one the other night with Joseph King, and man, it sounded like shit. My guitar sounded like shit. That it was it was kind of janky. I didn't. I don't yeah, know, I didn't like it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of. Like, I think. I think the easiest way. I, I went to watch Roger jo- Roger Blevins. Yeah. On Wednesday, and um, his first song sounded complete, like complete um, um, professional. Like, man, like, like next level stuff. And then his whole computer shut down. Everything he had worked on had different angle camera angles uh, and all yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when he switched to his his just his iPhone. Yeah. And just him and an iPhone, it sounded great. Yeah, like you don't need it. Like I, I'm, I'm not even gonna add. Like when I go on live now, I just. But the for some something happens that the vote. Like when it, when you go on live, I think the vocals match up. But when you go back to watch it, the vocals don't match up. Right. Like there's right. a there's a delay or something. Yeah, yeah. What can you do? You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I'm I'm not too worried about it. You're not. So now and the next thing I'm gonna do is um I'm gonna do um a series of when when I feel like it. Is take people through the process of me making the, these these demos, or making these records, whatever. That would be interesting. Yeah, so I, I show like I show them what's going on. Like the la- I did one last night. It's on my in my promotions thing, and um, and I just showed them how the had the vocals because I always like to do the bass. I like to do the the vocals, the drums, yeah. and acoustic guitar. And then I send it. 
So I showed them that, let them see how it sounds. So, and then when I get everything, but next time I get the bass back, I'm gonna show them. Yeah. That show me, maybe show me, show them a little bit of me comping the bass a little bit, but see, let them see how it happens. Yeah. That's I don't know how many more times I want to try to perform. Yeah. Bless you. That baby sitting there sneezing. Bless you, baby. I should son. probably be worried. I should probably be worried, huh? Yeah. Why are you sneezing? There's allergies too, which is the problem. I spent uh, uh, I spent all of last week waking up, not this past week, but the week before when the oak was real high. I would mm. wake up every morning, not every morning. I'd say four of the mornings that week, I woke up thinking I was I was infected, and then I'd take <laughs> a fucking Zyrtec, and an hour later I was fine again. <laughs> you don't have the instead you don't have the temperature. No, you should be good to go. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I'm I'm allergic to mold. You are. So when it rains and then yeah, when it rains and then all that stuff. And you know what? The mold thing gives me kind of like asthma kind of symptoms. Right, so. right. Yeah. You, this is... you, you start... What's that? Go ahead. No, I said go ahead. Um, so what are you doing? Oh, you disappeared. What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing to keep yourself sane on a daily basis? Before this, before this, you were uh, you were an admitted television addict on on my podcast. You said it. I know. Uh, I know. And there's only so much you can watch. I've been making music. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. I've been making this music and stuff like that. I wish I had that, that other adapter because of my battery's low. Um, yeah. I've been making music big time, man, 24-7. That's great. Like, I've, I've, already, I've already got in the works five, five songs and then getting ready out there. And then I'm doing that acapella thing. Yeah. I've got a video, I got a video out with the violins. We're doing another one with the violins, the strings. That's great. I've got one out with um, Susanna. Yeah, Wheezy. Yeah, Who yeah. knows her? But I know Wheezy. She gonna take forever. Yeah, she gonna, She. I sent it to her. I might not get that thing back into Corona eight twenty two. <laughs> but who knows when she'll get it back to me? Um, and then I have um, and then I'm, I'm trying to get Mexican Chocolate up and running because he's not in any, in in any of the videos. But acapella only works on iPad on iPhone. Right. An iPad, which sucks. I'm kind of bummed. Does, does it work at all on a on a MacBook Pro? Because I think Skyrocket's going to try and do something like that, but I don't have an an iPad or a nope. iPhone. Okay, so I'm. Fine. It doesn't. Yeah, my, my Mike had a has a MacBook, and it and it wouldn't work unless you can. Here's the thing: Can you find the app? If you can find the app and it lets you download it, you can do it. And if you can, let me know because he said he couldn't do it. Now he might be. He might be challenged as far as technology goes. So if you can do it, let me know, and then I'll try to talk him through it. But he couldn't find it, and he couldn't. You know what? No, Rita, his wife did, and she, I know she didn't have a problem, and she couldn't figure it out. She couldn't get on her on a watch call it. So yeah. that sucks. That sucks. Y'all, y'all about to do some stuff with it? Well, I know that there's some stuff that we're gonna do. I can't. I, it's not all final yet, and I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, we're going to put out a show that we already played, but it was like a five-camera shoot with like professional audio, mm. and it's really good, and it's the whole show, like both sets, like, you know, two and a half hours of, oh, of, okay. of show done in a really good way. There's no way for the seven of us to get together and have someone film it. You know what I mean? That's already like yeah, a, yeah, too yeah. many people, no matter yeah, yeah, how yeah. far we get apart. Um, <laughs> did you watch Tiger King? You watched Tiger King? Uh, yeah, I watched that before. I, I watched that when it first came out. Me too. Like, I stay on top of stuff. That guy's crazy. That whole thing is crazy, man. <laughs> it's funny. It's, 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 um, it almost, it's almost to the point where I, it makes me not even want to believe it. Like, some of that stuff that was going on, I just, I don't believe it. Like, I just don't believe it. I was, I was, crazy. I was describing it to my aunt and that's what I was like. It's the kind of story that like you think about trying to 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 like go to a a a like a, a a movie studio and pitch that as a movie they would be like that is just completely exactly yeah you can't have that much stuff going on you can't have a guy really like that one after the other then the, the, i mean it just just never stop her wife's missing i mean her husband's missing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The other guy looks like he's he's running a, a sex slave um, yeah, ranch that with lots of time. So horrible. You know what I mean? It's like it's like every character. Then yeah. you got you got two guys are saying, "Well, I'm not gay," but he, he had meth and tigers. Right. It's like, 
It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, I, I don't care how many tigers you got. I think the part people don't that, do that. The part that people aren't talking about enough is that he ran for president. Oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot all about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I totally forgot about that. And then when he didn't win, he ran for um, governor. governor. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, what I a... can't. I... You're right. I totally forgot about that. that fool ran for president <laughs> and made and and embezzled his money. Yeah. And on those yeah. Stick, those coin things. Yeah, yeah. And he got his camp, his that. campaign manager was his gun guy at Walmart. But he had always oh dreamed God. of being a campaign manager. <laughs> I know that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the sad part was that when that guy killed himself in front of that guy. Yeah. The part I didn't understand was he was he was he playing around? Did he really not think the bullet was in there and it was playing around and said that? Or? That's that's what I thought. Man, that's, that's a terrible way to go. Yeah, it's terrible. That's a terrible way to go. That what, sucks. Let me ask you about some more entertainment shit because I did want to get your angle on this early on. Uh, Love is blind. Did you watch that? Mm-mm. Okay. I don't like. Re- I, don't, I, don't, I don't really like. I don't either. I mean, I know Joe Tiger King's a reality show, but it, I don't really consider that a reality it's a show. But documentary kind of, yeah. That whole love is blind. You you gonna marry somebody without even seeing them, and talk to man? Come on. I that's, I heard, that's ridiculous. I heard about it on a podcast, and when I was on my way to a gig, like whenever it had come out, you know, and I was driving home from the gig, and I was listening to the rest of the podcast. And it sounded so terrible that I was like, all right, when I get home, I got, I got to just see what's going on here. You watched it, Johnny? I watched the whole, like I watched two episodes <laughs> that night, fell asleep, and watched the whole rest of the thing the next day. Like woke up, made breakfast, got in bed, and started watching it again. So is it worth it? Is it a guilty pleasure? Is it worth it? It's horrible. It's it's really it's it's terrible. They're terrible people. But it was like a train wreck that you couldn't turn away from. <laughs> I can't do it. I don't watch The Bachelor. I don't watch none of that. No, stuff. I don't watch any of that stuff either. Uh, it's, all right. Anything else? Any movies? Man, um, no. I, you know, what I went back in, which which is when I'm, I am watching TV, which takes takes up a lot of time, and I didn't know when I started it. I didn't know it had um, six seasons and like 25 episodes. I forgot this was back in the day when they made 25 episodes. Oh, season. right, right. So I'm watching Gossip Girl again. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that is, <laughs> I'm like, I'm, these, I, I, I'm really a, a person that feels like I need to finish what I start. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of dedicated to it. Yeah. But man, I did not know that it had like 25 episodes on yeah. a season. Like now you have like, what, 10? Yeah. If you're lucky. Yeah. I was like, geez, this is some serious binge watching. And I forgot how I can't. I didn't know I hated some of these characters so much. What? It's going to be hard. I never saw it. I know the name of it, and I kind of know the font and what it looks oh, like when you see yeah. it. But but what what Don't is it? Start. What is it? It's about about rich upper side teenagers that um um <laughs> that's about it. Acting like stupid, um, falling in love with each other, getting there's a scandal um. Um, I don't know. It's like I like I like those like um shows that you don't have to really do a lot of thinking. Yeah. Like you can just you can just watch your phone and still kinda of follow it. Yeah. Um but it's um it's got a bunch of um you ever watch nine oh two one oh? What nine oh two one oh? No. Yeah. You ever no. watch nine oh two one oh? No. Did you ever watch um Melrose Place? Uh, the O C? Nope. Yeah. No, I never watched no. How about Dallas? Dallas, yeah. Yeah. But to show Dallas? Yep. Okay, now be like Dallas, but make everybody um, in, in high school and college. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a nighttime soap opera. Yeah, scandals yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. That's what it is. That's what it is. You never uh, watched 90210? No, no. And the funny thing about Dallas was I remember like Dallas came on some cable channel when I was in high school. And they showed it every night, and I watched. That's how I watched Dallas. It was like in 1986 and 87, I watched the whole thing. And you watched the reruns? Yeah, reruns. Mm. And I had to watch because my dad loved it. Yeah. It was back in the days when they had one TV. Yeah. So that's what your dad's watching? That's what, that's you're, what watching. you're watching. Yeah. Yeah. 
Plus the guy, well, that, the guy that pays the bills always ends up with the remote control in those situations. Oh, yeah. Well, I was the remote control back in those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the vice grip on the channel, you know, on the, the button brakes. Yeah, with the button TVs. brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the guy, where's the vice grips? Where's yeah. the vice grips? I got the vice grips, turning it, turning it, turning it. <laughs> God, you know, there was there was somebody I was talking to the other day on the phone, like somebody in my family, and we were talking about, uh, could you imagine if this shit happened like in the 70s and you had three channels that ended at midnight? Oh, my God. Without anything else to do, though. Think about it. You can't get in. Think about how cut off we would be. Completely you know? like, cut off. You'd be completely cut off. Like, that would be that would be very very lonely. So what I, did they do when the when the when the influenza happened in the that one they called the Spanish one or whatever in nineteen eighteen? Yeah, I wonder how they did that. Well, like you, how did they even know it was coming? Yeah, you know what I mean? Newspapers. Like, how did you even know? Newspapers. Uh, yeah. Extra. Did extra. So, did they do social distancing back then too? I don't know. I don't know. Have you watched yeah. any of the pandemic things like that show Pandemic oh, yeah. on Netflix? I watched yeah. it too. Yeah, I watched that. I didn't. That I didn't, right there was very telling. It was very telling because it was made yeah. before this happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. they, they were saying, were they not saying it? All they said throughout the whole thing is it's not a matter of if, it's when. This when. is coming. They, they even said coming. where it was coming from. Yep. They said it. Yeah. I mean, they I were like, like, this is going to come I from China. Not, it's going to be a I thing. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it, man. They were saying how, and they, they even got it almost down to the animals. It's like, there's going to be some animal that's mixed up. It's going to jump from an animal to, to a human. Um, and then I found out that Trump got rid of the people on our side that's supposed to be looking for this stuff. Yeah. You know, there was that woman was saying he got rid- he, yep. he cut the budget of the people who kept uh, kept looking for it. I was just like, man, this is crazy. I can't, I mean, I, I wish this. And the one guy, and, and what's funny is like, the people who are getting close to having the vaccine, like, would you mind having seven shots? I don't care if I'm getting seven shots if it's going to give you a vaccine, right. vaccine yeah, yeah, yeah. to help yeah. me. You know what I mean? Like, they're trying to get it down. But the fact that they only needed two million dollars, when you, when, as you, if you think about the the result, like a vaccine that would wipe out this, and you can't raise two million dollars, yeah, I was like, goodness gracious, man! I bet you as much money as they want right now. It's like that so, thing, you know, uh, like ten years ago, I got a DWI. It was dismissed, but I got a DWI. And mm. there were times in my life before that where I would be like, man, I don't have money for a taxi. I'm just going to drive home. The amount of money you pay for even a dismissed, you know. How much is that? Like thousands, isn't it? Yeah, mine got dismissed. I never even went to court. Like they saw the video. The court saw the video of my thing, and they were like, that guy's not drunk. He was fine, you know. I I was still out of pocket $11,000. God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, nowadays, if you're driving drunk and with Lyft and all that stuff around, he's just he's just stupid. You're stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you realize, like, you're like, you know what? Uh, you know, spending an extra 20, 25 bucks when you go out to not spend 10 grand is a great idea. Exactly. Yeah. A very good example. Yeah. That's, that's what you're saying, how you tied that in. Spending $2 million versus the economy complete, almost completely collapsing. As opposed to $2 trillion so far, what they've spent. And you know what? That's not even a dent. that's not even gonna make a dent, man. No. Like, what's what's twelve hundred dollars gonna do, especially in Austin, to somebody who who lives in a, the apartment or their or their rent for a house is probably around. That's not even dollars. my rent. Like, that's not even the twelve hundred dollars is not even my my rent. Rent, right? Yeah. It's like what? Like that's like it's so crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Well, so what also, are you doing? What's that? What are you doing now, as far as income? Well, I mean, uh, I uh, we're lucky. We had some private things lined up for Skyrocket that canceled or postponed. And so mm-hmm. if they cancel, we get to keep the deposit. And if they just reschedule, we'll just get paid half the money because we used all the deposit money to sort of float ourselves oh. for... I mean, hopefully a little more than a month, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a, you know, it wasn't like there was a thousand, you know, a million dollars in there for us. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've done a live stream where I played the other night and that was good. Mm -hmm. And, um, I've set up, you know, I've done this show for so long. It's always been free. 
I don't have anything behind a paywall. Like you can go through all of the archives for free. And so I've been kind of like pushing that a little bit on the shows. Like, hey, if you've got it, you know, I've lost a couple of advertisers on here that were pretty lucrative for me. So, oh. yeah, that would have been good. They, they, you know, they were out pretty early on. And also, Why'd they pull out? Uh, Why'd they pull out? Well, one of them was business cards. Oh. And so uh, the Vistaprint, they were like, no thanks. Uh, uh, the other one is a, is a guitar pedal company here. And they were like, we don't, we, if whatever we sell, we don't want to, we can't give you any part of it anymore. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, the other one, man, the one that sucks is that guy, John Neese from, uh, from Austin signal studios. He was an advertiser for a while, but he closed down his vinyl production plant. No, but is it for good or just temporary for good? Oh, for good? Yeah, and that was that was my best one. Wow. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, but people have been donating. You know, I mean, hit. You know, I think that I think that if everybody assumes this hit together, be it like my my apartment people, like the landlords are like, you know, look, if you can't pay your rent or pay your whole rent, reach out to us. You know, we can work out a thing where. Like pay the plan. Well, if you've got a year lease. Then you know what? You pay a little bit this month, you pay a little bit next month, and then everything you didn't pay, they just add it to your rent for the rest of the lease, you know? Spread oh, out. Yeah, your rent yeah. will go up later, but you know, at least they're they're Kinda helpful in those situations. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm lucky that um my job right now is um is still essential work and and um and um I saw trucks I have to wait for trucks to show up and trucks are still delivering to IBM, so for now, I'm I'm still I'm still working. That's I great. I have to go in. I have to leave the house. Baby C works from the ghetto lounge. She works from here. That's good. Inside this room. Yeah. So we're lucky so far. Very lucky. Very lucky. But you mean if it gets pushed back another thirty days, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because eventually they have a cease. Like they're, they're not allowed to order. Keep ordering stuff, right? So if they stop ordering, that means things are going to stop coming in. And so they're probably like, well, we don't really need anybody there because right. nothing's coming in anymore. Right. I can't work from home because my whole thing is I unload trucks and stuff. So. Right. Man, I don't know. You think it's going to go past May? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like... Uh... I feel like if people take this seriously... Which maybe they are now, you know. The more people self, the more people stay away from each other, the better off we're all going to be. Mm-hmm. I know that I, I, I can only speak for myself. Uh, you know, I've, I've literally done the thing that they say, like make your movements ten percent of what they were. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. I've gotten it to where the way that I'm shopping, I can go to the grocery store once a week. That's what we do. So that's pretty much my whole. That's my public thing. I go walking, but I don't walk on the trail anymore at all because there's people on there. I just walk all the streets and the neighborhoods and the sidewalks. But I do have to get outside and walk or like, you know, I've had a couple of days where I've, I've, you know, not, not like freaked out and been in a ball, you know, crying in the corner, but pretty bummed out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. More than I should be. I like that yesterday when I was like, I was like. You know, you're gonna play. You're gonna program so many drums and make so many videos. And I love going to the movies. That's that's my thing. I love yeah. going to movies. Yeah. Yesterday, I was like, man, I'm sick of this. It's like I want to go to the movies or something. Yeah. I don't. Really, I don't really leave the house that much anyway. So I was already kind of unless I go see some shows and everything. But, right. Um, you know, it's crazy though. I've seen a great post is that <laughs> Kate Bar- Kate Bar- Barton Springs. I like to call Barton Springs. Put a good post of it. Said um. Gas is cheap. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, something Flights else is cheap. cheap but Flights, I, yeah, yeah, but I can't leave the house. I'm grounded. Yeah, I feel like I'm a teenager again. Yeah, you know, you can fly to Los Angeles right now for thirty four dollars round yeah. trip. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, oh. that is crazy. They need, they need just ground. They, they, I mean, it seems like it'd be cheaper for them to just ground the planes. Yeah, didn't you think? I think so, but I think they've cut down the flights a lot. Like, it's oh, not like there's multiple flights per day going from Austin to L.A. 
The planes are grounded a lot. Um, I was going to ask you this. Have you taken advantage of these? Uh, like you like going to the movies, but you also like watching movies, right? Have you seen mm-hmm. how people are releasing movies at just like on demand right now? Like when they were supposed to come out in the theater? Some of them have been held up. Are you up. serious? Yeah. Yeah, look on on Is demand. Is a quiet place out there? Is a quiet place? No, I, th- I think I read that that one got postponed. Like James Bond got postponed. Some superhero movie got postponed, but they released they've released a handful of movies over the last couple of weeks on Fridays. That when they were supposed to come out in the movies, they just put them on on demand. Uh oh, are you there, guys? Ray Prim is frozen in time. Ray, Ray, I thought he wasn't moving. I thought. Oh, the call failed. All right. You hear me? Yes. What happened? My, um, hang on, let me do this. Now this makes sense. <laughs> oh, this is um, so stupid. Um, <laughs> I thought I plugged in my camera, and I actually plugged in my external hard drive. <laughs> oh. Because I told you my phone was dead because I was making videos earlier. Right. And the video, it, it just, it just, um, it drains the phone. Right. Totally. And um, I thought, I, so I thought I had the the thing plugged in. Penny move. I thought I had it plugged in, and um, and I didn't. I had my 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 lamp plugged in, so my phone was not charging the whole time. Oh. So yeah. <laughs> I looked over there. I was like, I looked over. I was like, oh my god. My um, hang on. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to plug my phone back in. It's so much stuff. So what were you saying? About the so what I was saying is that they've released movies that were supposed to come out in the movies on demand. Now I think it's like nineteen dollars or something. Nineteen dollars. But if you and Baby C watch it together, that's how much you'd spend at the movies. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It is true. See, at I first got, I had that what response. Do you see it on? What do you see it on on the man? Like on online? Like um, is, what do, you... do you have cable? Yes. It's on on demand there. Look at like the new movies on demand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now that would be fun. I need to go move out, but I have to turn it all dark, make some hot dogs or something. Yeah. I, I missed the buffalo cauliflower. Oh yeah. From Alamo Draft stuff. House. Yeah, that's oh, some good. I like that in their fried pickles, man. Yes. Yes. Big and large. Yeah. Why are we in this situation, Johnny? I don't know, man. We're in this situation because some people decided to eat some weird exotic food from a very nasty fucking place. Uh, so uh, that's why man, we're here. I, I really hope it's not seasonal like some of them think. Oh, dude, you got to talk to my dad. His. Oh, what oh man, uh, this is definitely a, a democratic coup against Trump. What? <laughs> what? Are you yeah. Serious? <laughs> yeah. He's in that headspace, man. That's what's going on out there, like in the Rush Limbaugh's of the world. You know what I find is that, and I find this also. I find this also with 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 people on the other side of that as well. Like I know people that that they wake up and watch MSNBC all day, and then when they consume something, it's it's Bill Maher or somebody you know who is. So you know you can get in a lane where I think you just keep hearing the same thing all day. Then you think that that it that that is absolute truth, right? Because all these mm-hmm. people are sending you the same message. And my dad's in that loop on the other side. Where he like wakes up with the Fox and Friends and then Rush Rush Limbaugh and then at the afternoon and those guys those guys are real good about whatever message comes out of the White House. They all echo it throughout the day. So yeah. therefore, to my dad, how could that not be true? He like, yeah. this is this the president said it, Rush said it, this Fox morning show said it, Hannity said it. Uh, well, who else do you need, buddy? Like they're all <laughs> saying it. So <laughs> There, there is this weird. There, it's, I have this these odd conversations with him now daily. That's that, crazy. Yeah, 
<laughs> is he trying to convince you? Or are you trying to convince him? Or are you both just listening to each other? There's no way. Well, he won't listen to me. There's no, there's no my oh. side of anything. The other day he told oh. me that I need to listen to Joel Olstein, the, the mega church guy down in Houston, because yeah. he knows more of what's going on in this situation than anyone else. And then I said, Dad, I'm not going to lie to you. I, in this situation, I listen to the scientists. Mm-hmm. They seem like, like the guys that know, have been doing this their whole lives. Yeah, like, yeah. And this is what they do for a living. And this is, you know, the guys that have been telling us about it for a while and telling us it's going to get bad and it keeps getting bad. And then he said, uh, this is a direct quote. Fuck science, my boy. You need to listen to Olstein. <laughs> Where does your dad live? He lives in Miami. Oh. And he's a he's a guy proudly out every day, driving around, going to places. He's this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is just people. The governor, yeah. The governor didn't close anything now. Yeah. The governor didn't say anything. He's like, I'm gonna wait for Trump to say something. They do have a curfew there. They do now? Yeah. They've so had so it there we'll for about a week. We'll um Go um, hang out together until a certain curfew. Yeah. Get, get the virus nice and spread around, and then we'll go inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the interesting thing was he, this morning, his thing, his main thing that he was most concerned about was there's a, a cruise ship outside of oh, north yeah. of Miami. Mm-hmm. And he's not afraid of, of America. He's like, they need to get the Americans off here, but we can't have those foreign people come in here and contaminate us. And I'm... <laughs> I also I also have to preface this with my father was born in Cuba, so he is also <laughs> not born American, but he is he's like anti-immigrant, like nobody's business. <laughs> How is that possible? It's it's a really unique situation, Ray, and it's a unique exercise in patience in myself. I'm not going to lie; it's an exercise in patience in myself to openly love and accept my father for who he is and the crazy beliefs that he has because he's my father. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's an odd thing I put myself through uh, a lot. <laughs> I'm lucky out. I'm, I'm lucky. Me and all of my family are on the same page when it comes to all this stuff. Yeah, that's good. We're all like, we're all like you know, I don't, I don't have as much disdain as, as my dad does or my uncles and stuff like that, but I mean, I just... I, I couldn't imagine him coming and telling me, okay, this is what you need, this is who's right, and we're on the opposite ends of that stuff, because that's like, I couldn't handle it. That's enough, there's enough to deal with that on um, Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. Yeah. That's another reason why I started a group, man. Well, you know what's crazy, John? I was telling um Jack this morning, before all this went down, I started a group called Promotions, um, Lies, and Videotapes, where uh-huh. I was going to try to move my music over there. With no no talk, you can't. I don't. I don't even want people posting. Like it's all it ain't about anything else. I don't hear about anything else. It's just about you can check out the music where I'm playing, and then if I post something, you can interact with each other there. Yeah. No arguing, no fussing, no fighting. Right. So before everything went down, I had like 300 and some people. But then four days after I posted that um, video of um, me with the strings uh-huh. and stuff like that with the string. I'm up to 956. Shit. Yeah. And then the thing, the beautiful thing about groups is is that you don't have – it's a different algorithm. So once I post in there, because you accepted my group, it sends out a notification. You know what I mean? So oh, it well, sends a notification out to people because they chose to be in that group. You know what I mean? Right. So every, every time so every time like anybody posts in a group, um, well, and I got it to where – I don't let I, I didn't want it to get to where like people start posting a lot and they get a lot of posts from me and they get sick of me, right? Right. So I, I only I can post in there. I'm the only one that's gonna post in there. When I post it's either gonna be a video that they know to watch. Right. Or music. Right. And it's been working fine. And that, that's what I'm that's what I wanna really focus on now. I really now I start now I'm actually gonna start sending um invitations out to join it. You For know what? Yeah, that's a good idea. I should do that. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. Move to try to use this time to move to a group. Okay. Because if every time you and then you, but you got to control it. You don't want to get on people's nerves. Like I don't post in it a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if I do post, they know it's about to be music. Right. You know, some people are probably still ignoring it. You know, when once uh, once they do, you know, they might not. You know, they'll be like, okay, we don't know what he's posting about. But I'm trying to get people to know that 
if I post something, it's going to be music based. It's not it's no me judgment, no none of that stuff. Is you either going to see a video or me talking about a song or me showing you something. So you'll want to come back. And then the people who don't want to see that, that's they don't fine have too. To, yeah, they don't have to be part of the group. No, they they always get out of the group if they don't want to be that part. Of that. that makes a lot of sense because I went to your Ray Prim music page and I wasn't going to say anything on here, but I was like, there is just not a lot of stuff going on here. Where is this stuff that I see? Because did I join no. your group? Because I do get I do yeah. get announcements about it. Let yeah, and you know what the beautiful thing about it is so so this this is what's been really working for me too is that people like the video. We want to share. Hi, why can't I share this video? I was like, you can't share the video. Only people in here can see the video. You have, but you can invite people to join. Oh. And so, I one girl invited like forty people. She's like, you need to see this video, and she invited like forty people. Oh, so I wow. the video on top on, on on so it's the first thing they see for the last four days. You know, and so that's what I've been doing. Man, nobody. No, I mean it, the the music page. I don't nobody follow that thing. He's got so many algorithms over there. That's the one thing they really want you to pay from. Right. Nothing goes through. Huh. And I ain't got nothing to pay for, so. What's it called? Damn Premonition, God. Lies, and Videotape? Premonition, Lies, and Videotapes. No, Promotion. <laughs> Premonition. Promotion. Oh. Promotion, Promotions, Lies, and Videotape. Because I'm always promoting, I'm always lying about something, and I've been making videos. <laughs> so you're going to be making more videos? Uh, oh, yeah. Especially when we get Mexican chocolate up and running. Yeah. But I've got two out there right now that I'm working on. No, well, three. One, um, one's a Bill Withers tribute, and, and, um, One's with Susanna Chaffel, and the other one's with the strings again. Okay. We're doing another strings one. This one's upbeat. I'm learning how to bring in tracks now. So oh, we that's play great. To, so it's like playing with, like, like the last one with the band, and that's a track that's behind us. Oh, with that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this thing's pretty cool. I mean, this is a pretty cool app, man. I'm digging it. That's awesome, man. Um, so. Well, any uh, anything I'm missing here? Anything people need to catch up on? It's great catching up with you. Yeah, you too, man. Hey, Stay did you? Did I ask you this question? Did you win a Black Fret grant? No. Yes. Um, 2017. Okay, not this last year though. Were you up? No. For one? No, my, my, no I, 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 I was campaigning for it. Not campaigning. I think it was 2017. Okay. When I won. No, I won in 2016. Okay. And made the record in 2017. Right. Um. Another question I have: Are you going to release? the the next version of uh of uh of too much to lose anytime the, soon that's on the next uh album oh, the next version it's yeah. it's on it should be on my web page oh it is i think it's on my web page yeah okay i think so i haven't i'm, I'm not going to re release um any music from any of that stuff man once I, once i go forward yeah i I'll, like that about you, you. you know yeah I mean? it's like yeah. like i really I'll, I'll get sick of it. It's like when, um, like the 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 stuff I did with Prem. Only reason I'm re revisiting that because it was so horrible, are we didn't release it. Right. And then, like, and I and I saw a video. Even even the way I sang back then, like in in 2000, is different. I yeah, think I learned yeah. how to, by singing with Mexican chocolate or something. Maybe he rubbed off on me. I, I changed my style and. I just don't even sound the same. I was like, man, this is horrible. So there, am I gonna be? Am I gonna feel like this ten years from now? Like, I look back on this music and be like, oh my god, what were you doing in two thousand twenty? You know, uh, I have that with my early nineties. I don't listen to any of my stuff, Mister Rocket Baby, or anything like that. I can't stand that guy that singing. Was good, good though. That yeah, I, I don't. I, it's funny because I was watching your. Uh, I was. I was watching those videos this morning and they're ones where it's just you doing all the vocals in the in the app oh and, yeah and your voice is is so good i don't it's know if people though. talk about that a lot but it is like you're not just a great song or you become a great song you're such a great singer your delivery is just unbelievable 
Thank you, John. Yeah, I, man. I, I, I feel ghetto when I'm trying to do it, but, you know, singing, I think, I really think, because, you know, Mexican chocolate is still way, is ridiculous. Yeah. But I think just singing with him and having to keep up with him and learning from him. Yeah. And we have to harmonize with him. It just kind of changed my style a little bit, you know? It's like slowly, and slowly, and also, you remember, you, you remember Paul Sessoms? Yeah. Um, back in those days, it's like, and even this was still older, he, he, it's me visiting on trying to sing all over the place, you know? Right, right, right. And yeah. Part of singing to the song. Yeah. But more and more, I learned how to sing to the song, and then, you know, how you evolve, and then you just like, you also get kind of lazy. <laughs> Well, there's also that thing like you get, there's always that young musician and singer thing where you feel like you have to do everything you know every time you open your mouth so that nobody and misses that, that you know all this stuff. You know what yes. I mean? Well, that, that's why I learned, that's why, I, man, I, rest in peace. Bill Withers was my was my guy, you know, like that, yeah. he was my guy. It's like, that's why I patterned everything out. Too. He was simple. You know, the music wasn't, the guitar, I'm not a great guitarist. He wasn't that, like known for being a guitarist. He was like he had these songs. He had a message. That's why I tried to pattern my whole thing after man. I just, I just, I, um, that's yeah. just it's like it sucks, man. I, I was, I was dreading this day. I was like, man, what happens with Bill Withers? Now we got to do a. You can't even do a tribute. Who knows when we're gonna be able to do a tribute to him or do a show to him? So yeah, it's sad. That is sad. Just like his life. He kept it under wraps. Like he died on Monday, but it didn't come out till Friday. Hmm. You know? It's like yeah. anything like he does, it's like he was is um he could walk down the street and people wouldn't know him. You tell people like, Oh, you like Bill Withers, I don't know who Bill Withers is. Yes, you do. Yeah. You do. It's like that Towns Van Zant Towns Yeah, Van yeah, Zant. yeah, yeah. I knew I knew him. Like Right, right. Like I don't know who Towns Van is. It's like it, but it's like did he sing Brown Eyed Girl or something like that? No, he that? sang uh, Poncho and Lefty. He wrote oh, Poncho yeah. and Lefty. All the federal I see. Yeah. It was a big hit for Willie Nelson. That's the kind of stuff like I tell people, you know, don't be with us. He sings Lean On Me and Just Lovely Day and all this stuff. So that's why I was trying to, I started like, you know, instead of me trying to make everything so complicated and all this stuff, I just wanted to make stuff simple. Them and the Beatles were my two. Him and the Beatles were my two biggest, biggest influences. influences. Yeah, as far as songwriting, learn how to write songs, stuff like that. Two were biggest. You, were you a fan of that Fountains of Wayne guy? I'm drawing a blank Ooh. on his name again. Adam Schlesinger that passed away this week from Fountains of Wayne. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Mm -mm. No man, 2020 is really sucking, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is really sucking. You know what I mean? It's like left and right. We can't. You can't. Kobe, Bill Withers, a virus. Yeah. Just, it's just, when we, we, what month are we in? March? Yeah. April? In April. We're in April. <sighs> Jesus. Man, this is ridiculous, man. I just want to get up out of this year. We just got to get up out of this year. Well. Make it to 21 or something. Um, Yeah. Then the one time I get to play, well, I'll get to do Curveville again, but. Um, oh yeah, all that stuff is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Well, it's gonna be. We're gonna come back to a different kind of world, but I think that you're the kind of person and artist that will be able to adapt to whatever climate is presented to you. Yeah, um, I'm hoping that I'll be in the same way. You will if you play. If you play, I think the people who like are really. Um, if you play music because you really enjoy it, yeah. you know. Then whatever you, whether or not you in front of thousands of people or you in front of hundreds of people or you just making in your room, yeah, you're still doing it. It's keeping me sane. Like I don't, I don't know what I would do if I didn't play music. Like yeah, you go watch so much TV. Oh yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm a TV watcher. I, I, yeah, I love I will love watching TV too, but I hit my limit already like a week and a half ago. <laughs> I was just like, all right, man. It's like, I get it. No, I'm right. <laughs> and then and then the talk show people they can't do anymore because they can't they have to do social distancing. Yeah. And so everything's about to go into rerun season. You got no sports. This is why I normally watch sports. Yeah. I just realized I was like, man, like my life really revolves around sport talk shows 
the sports themselves and my TV shows that I watch on DVR. Right. And then when the sports stop, then the talk people, they're not talking about anything. I mean, they're not saying it. There's nothing to talk about, right? Right. So I'm not watching that. And then I was like, okay, I, I watched, I mean, you named something on Netflix. I was watching. Can't watch no more of those. I'm like, this is just, thank the Lord I can play some music. I was like, man, you know what I need to do? So what I should do, take this time to do is, is start practicing bass again. Yeah. I this thing and have a second career as a bass player. That's funny that you say that because I've been playing bass a lot. You have practicing Yeah, all? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, playing I want, along with shit. I'm going to see if, um, matter, of fact, matter of fact, when I get this call, I'm going to see if my bass player will Zoom with me and teach me some stuff. Yeah. Give me lessons, cousin. I mean, that's what I should be. I got the bass just sitting there. Learn, you know, that, learn some Bill Withers bass lines. I know a lot of it. You I do? know a lot of it. Um, well, yeah. Um, I got all this, all this stuff. I need to, what, I like, what I like to play when I practice bass is play to rap songs. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You know, just play like that, get it started. And I'll just, I'll just play like, especially a lot of, a lot of uh, Dr. Dre stuff and and um, the California stuff that they use a lot of old um, Commodores and stuff like that yeah. in, their, in their raps and stuff in their song production. So that's what I'll do. So once I finish these five, five things, I'm gonna start practicing on bass. Well, good. That's all. Good. What do? Well, uh, take care and stay safe. Yeah. Thank you for doing the show. People can find you at rayprim.com. There's a lot of music there, a lot of fantastic yes. music. And go join the uh, – I joined it, but now I'm just, it's it's promotion, lies, and videotape. Lies and videotapes. Okay. You should already be a part, though, shouldn't you? I just joined a minute ago. I was going to say, how did you see the videos? Okay. I saw back. some videos from your from your Ray Prim music page. That's why I was like, I've been getting notifications about these, and I've seen some different ones, but I couldn't find the one mm-hmm. that I saw the other day with the violins and stuff on your page. Yeah, so that's so, in the that's in the private one. All right, yeah. So now I'm in. I'm in. People get in there, get connected with Ray. Ray, uh, thanks again. Thanks for doing the show, and stay in touch, man. All right, you too. All right, buddy. Bye, buddy. Dream of a time. Always great talking to my dear old friend, Ray Prim. What a great, great artist he is. Uh, don't forget to go to his, uh, go on Facebook and go to his group, Premonitions, Lies, and Videotape. I'll put a link to it in the text of this podcast. For all of your other Ray Prim needs, go to rayprim.com. What a great songwriter, what a great artist. That song that you're hearing there is Too Much to Lose, available right now only on vinyl from uh, the next. You can go to austinmusicfoundation.org and see if those records are still available. I don't even know. But what a fantastic record. Features Ray Prim, all of the guys from the Artist Development Program. Guys and gals. Ray Prim, uh, Day Eater, William Harris Graham, uh, Calliope Musicals, Sidney Wright, uh, Kid Jones, Jay Milano. Great artist, great record. If you appreciate vinyl and you got the money to spend right now, get out there and do it. RayPrim.com is where you want to go for all your Ray Prim needs. And gang, when you're out there checking out Ray Prim, if you have not subscribed to this podcast on the medium on which you listen... Go to Spotify, go to Apple Podcasts, go to Stitcher, subscribe on there, give us a, give us a rating, give us a, a, a comment, tell us what we're doing, like our Facebook page, get involved. I'll be going live on there still throughout this pandemic. I'm thinking about pulling the show from three shows a week back to two shows a week next week. I'm going to go live right now and see what people think, but let me know. Go to our Facebook page. If you're enjoying the three shows a week during this quarantine time, I'll do it. But now that things are opening up and people are getting back to their regular lives, I don't know if my podcast, if this much of my podcast is needed. So let me know if you need it, I'll do it, okay? All right, here's the rest of that song, Too Much to Lose. What a great artist. Ray Prim, get out there, get involved. Go to rayprim.com. Do it. Watch his premonitions, lies, and videotape. Uh, Go to his group. Join it. Have a great rest of your week. Great. I don't even know what that means. Whatever. I hope the rest of the week works out for you Protest, and for me. Pro-choice. Let's get down. Profess, make noise. It's time for a change. Yeah. Cause her truth it takes time. Me too. Black lives. Now it all feels the same to me. So we pray for the day.
despair and hope is where I was born and I just can't seem to move. 